So today I am getting ready to insulate the floor of the van. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first uh, clean the floor with acetone. Even though this is a pretty new van, it's about a year old, when I pulled up the floor I was really surprised at how much there was on the floor. There was um, quite a bit of pine needles which had somehow gotten out, out under the floor. And then there's just, um, there was adhesive from the Velcro and then there's other things. So I'm just going to clean this to make sure um, that everything st sticks down really well and it's nice and clean before I lay the floor over it. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use kill mats, the 80 mil. I'm going to put that down first. Then I'm going to, I'm going to insulate with Havelock wool for the floor. Now there are a lot of different um, thoughts on insulation, especially floors. A lot of people use foam board. Um, what, from my research, uh, sheep wool or Havelock wool is really one of the best um, insulations you can use. That first of all, it's all natural, so there's no chemicals uh, that, that could be off-gassed into this small confined area. Uh, next, next, uh, if you've you know, worn wool before, you know that it insulates really well even when it's wet. And so uh, it doesn't, it, it, I think it lends well to this kind of environment, a van that's outside and can, will have different um, humidity in the air and us sleeping in it where we're, you know, um, having condensation inside. And so um, what, for my research, what the wool does is it will, when there's more moisture, it will absorb the moisture. And then when the environment is drier, it will release that moisture. And so it's really good at like breathing. And then whether it's it has dampness or moisture in it or not, it's still going to have the same um, insulation value. It's also a great sound deadener. Um, and that's kind of a big deal to me. I want, I want this thing to be as quiet as possible. I um, like to listen to music when I'm driving. And I know driving this back from Chicago, um, once we got above, above about six, 60 miles an hour, it really had to crank up the stereo to be able to hear anything very well. And so I want to deaden the sound as much as possible and wool does a really good job with that. Um, really the two best types of insulation for the interior of a van are um, spray foam is probably the tops. Uh, the, the drawbacks to that is that it's expensive anywhere from a thousand to sixteen hundred dollars I've heard to have the in interior sprayed. Um, you can do it yourself but it's a messy job requires some equipment um, and it does a really good job of insulating and deadening the sound but like I say that there's this the the cost and also chemicals you know you're gonna have chemicals in here that are off-gassing um, and so I decided to go with the wool. I'll be able to insulate this whole thing for about um, $500. Um, and that's the floor, wall, ceiling, everything with plenty of insulation. And so uh, I'm going to get started. I'm going to start acid, uh, cleaning the flooring with acetone. And then I'll move on to um, the kill mats. So here we go. There we go. Whoa, got it all, uh, floor all cleaned up and I'll let that dry for an hour or so. And then I'll start putting the kill mats down. Okay, so the acetone has had, had about an hour to dry. So now I'm ready to get started on laying down the kill mats. So let me just show you what this looks like. There are these uh, sheets and uh, they, they have an adhesive backing on them. And what you do is you lay them out all, you know, touching to cover the entire floor. And uh, then you roll them with these rollers. Um, I bought a couple of these different, different sizes. This one, uh, I think is one and a half inch. This will work well to do the tops of the ribs, the flat area. And then this narrow one, I think it's a half inch or three quarter inch, um, half inch will be good to do in between the ribs, the channels. And what's nice about these, you can see they have this pattern on them. And this pattern actually leaves a pattern in the kill mats so that you can see that you've rolled everything. And so that makes it really nice. So 
Um, I'll put links to all the tools that I'm using for this project along with the kill mats in uh, the description. Um, I'm using the 80 mil kill mats that also comes in a 50. There are also some, some other brands. I think Noico makes an even thicker one, like 200 and something mil. Uh, the 80 mil, since I'm also doing the Havelock wall, is going to be fine uh, to do this. Um, I'm mostly looking for sound deadening and a little bit of a vapor barrier um, between the, the exterior of the van and getting inside. Um, so I'll put a link to these. Um, they are affiliate links, so we do earn a little bit of income from these. We appreciate if you use them. It won't cost you any more, uh, but it helps us out a little bit to keep producing these videos. Um, you're going to need a um, utility knife. You're going to need a good pair of scissors, which I have right here. You're also going to want some good gloves because with these things, you're going to be rolling a lot of area. And um, so I love these gloves. I've gone through a lot of gloves in my time. And these are the gloves that a lot of mechanics work, wear. They allow you to you know, have good dexterity with your hands. Um, also, a lot of um, special forces in the military, Navy SEALs and people like that use these. Um, and they also last a long time. They're, they breathe, they have really good feel. So I will put a link to these as well. So um, the other thing I have is a couple of pads because I'm going to be kneeling a lot. You can also wear knee pads. Um, I find the knee pads, especially when I'm wearing shorts, are really um, uncomfortable on the back of my legs, the straps. So I'm just going to use these pads. Uh, so let's get started. So I'm going to start on this back edge and lay it along this wall and then work my way out. So I'll use this wall to make sure I have a straight um, edge, edge that I'm starting with. And uh, this step also can be a little bit messy. The, the adhesive can kind of ooze, ooze out. So you want to wear clothes that you don't mind messing up. So I've got this right up here. There's the pillar um, that it's bump into. So I can start right there. I'll put another piece up um, alongside this. And since you have ribs and you want it to kind of conform to the ribs, the best thing to do is start on one edge and kind of work it across the ribs. And it kind of, it conforms pretty well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this small one and roll in, this, in between the ribs. Actually, this one might fit. No, it doesn't quite fit. So I'm going to use a small one. And it's actually leaving that pattern so I can actually see where it's, where it's rolled. So I'm going to roll in between all of them with this small one. And then I'm going to roll the tops with the, with the big one. So there are some wider channels where the big one will fit down in, um, but then there's also um, narrower ones where you need to use a, a, a small one. So I'm going to show you how this looks. So you can see on this one, the one that I've rolled, it has these really narrow, this narrow pattern that matches up with this. You can see that. And then on the one I haven't rolled, it has this bigger kind of rectangular, rectangular pattern. So after I roll that, it's going to look more like this one. So you can see that you've rolled all the surface area. I'm going to do is I'm going to try peeling this back a little bit at a time so that I can make sure that I work it over the ridges. So I'll do that and then I'll just kind of peel it as I go. I think that's going to work a little bit better. Yeah. There we go. Of the sound deadening is 
that it's adhered to the floor. So that's why it's so important to make sure you cover all the area. Um, Just finished up uh, rolling out all of the kill mats. That's definitely the hardest part of the job. Job, really good to have some good gloves when you do that because it's hard on the hands. Um, my next step will be to uh, lay down furring strips and then put the Havelock wool in between those. So that'll be on the next video. Thanks for watching this one. Uh, really appreciate it if you use our links to purchase any items that we used here. Uh, it helps us out and doesn't cost you anything extra. And also subscribe to our channel to get updates on all of our um, build videos. And also hit the bell so that you're, you get an alert whenever we upload a new video. So here's a little tip for you. I started putting the uh, metal tape down on the flooring, on all the seams. And what I did is I bought the stuff that they recommended when I bought the, um, on Amazon, when I bought the um, kill mats. And it was a Noiko was the brand of metal tape. And I think it was about $10. And literally after laying it down, I did three strips. So probably about 30 feet worth of tape. And it was only like one and a half inches wide, pretty narrow and one and a half inches wide, about 30, maybe 36 feet. And it was around $10. So I jumped in the car, ran down to Lowe's and they had a roll of the same type of tape made by 3M, so name brand, huge roll, 360 feet for $12.68. So do not buy the tape that comes with, or that they recommend on Amazon when you buy matting. And I'm, they probably would recommend the same stuff, whether you buy Noiko or Rattletrap or um, Kill Mats, whatever. Just, you, all you need is just the metal duct tape that they sell at Home Depot or Lowe's. You're gonna get way, way more, like 10 times as much for the same price. So that's a pro tip. So I'm gonna head back home, finish up putting uh, this down and then I'll be ready to move on to the um, to put the furring strips down for the floor and lay the wool down and then put my subflooring in. So stay tuned for the next video.